2001, American Christian radio host Harold Camping stated that the rapture and judgment day would take place on May 21, 2011. Some believers quit their jobs, some liquidated their assets, and ended up losing their homes. On May 23rd, Camping stated that May 21st had been a spiritual day of judgment and that the physical rapture would occur on October 21st. In March of 2012, Camping humbly acknowledged that he had been mistaken, that his attempt to predict a date was sinful, and that his critics had been right. Some believed that the earth would end on October 21st, 2011. It did not. Thus the prophecy of U.S. radio broadcaster Harold Camping rang hollow. Question. If Harold Camping uttered a false prophecy, how would God and his son view this? And in case you should say in your heart, how should we know the word that Jehovah has not spoken? When the prophet speaks in the name of Jehovah, and the word does not occur or come true, that is the word that Jehovah did not speak. With presumptuousness, the prophet spoke it. You must not get frightened at him. He said, Look out that you are not misled, for many will come on the basis of my name, saying, I am he, and the due time has approached. Do not go after them. Question. Does Harold Camping's deriving his predictions from calculations based on scriptural interpretation, rather than claiming inspiration, make him less of a false prophet? Was he simply just trying to keep awake, rather than sleeping or nodding off? True, there have been those in times past who predicted an end to the world, even announcing a specific date. Yet nothing happened. The end did not come. They were guilty of false prophesying. Jehovah God is the grand identifier of his true messengers. He identifies them by making the messages he delivers through them come true. Jehovah is also the great exposer of false messengers. How does he expose them? He frustrates their signs and predictions. In this way, he shows that they are really self-appointed prognosticators, whose messages really spring from their own false reasoning. Yes, their foolish, fleshly thinking. Question. Should Harold Camping have tried to calculate God's timetable? When now they had assembled, they went asking him, Lord, are you restoring the kingdom to Israel at this time? He said to them, It does not belong to you to get knowledge of the times or seasons which the Father has placed in his own jurisdiction. Question. Were the apostles here like Harold Camping, proclaiming a worldwide campaign that set definite dates regarding the times and seasons of God's timetable? Or did they simply direct a question toward the person who would know best? After the apostles learned that it did not belong to them to know, did they go ahead proclaiming their own predictions anyway? If it did not belong to the apostles to know God's times and seasons, why did Harold Camping think that it belonged to him? Concerning that day and hour, nobody knows, neither the angels of the heavens nor the Son, but only the Father. Question. Could Harold Camping then be considered a faithful and wise servant of God? Was he faithful to God's word that precludes making false predictions? Was he wise in doing so? Was he giving the right sort of food at the right time? What did this prediction show in regard Harold Camping's credentials as to being a unique messenger or channel of communication from God? Question. Should those that listen to Harold Camping demand more than the usual of him? Should they have continued to follow his teachings? If he had been shown to be a false messenger, could he later become a true channel of communication from God? Can they expect someone who has proved to be a false prophet suddenly to become a true prophet? Indeed, everyone to whom much was given, much will be demanded of him. And the one whom people put in charge of much, they will demand more than usual of him. Not many of you should be teachers, my brothers, knowing that we shall receive heavier judgment. Even though Harold Camping directly apologized, calling his predictions a sinful statement and publicly asking God for forgiveness, should he have stepped down as a teacher of God's word? What is his responsibility to his followers who emptied their bank accounts and quit their jobs to help spread this message? 
Even if he truly repented and they forgave him, would it follow that they should keep him as a teacher of God's word? I was struck by how some believers edited the past in order to avoid acknowledging that they had been mistaken. The engineer in his mid-twenties, the one who told me that this was a prophecy rather than a prediction, maintained that he had never claimed to be certain about May 21st. When I read him the transcript of our previous interview, he seemed genuinely surprised that those words had come out of his mouth. It was as if we were discussing a dream he couldn't quite remember. Stay alive to 75. 